Hello there, everybody. Thank you for joining me today as I show some of the functionality inside of Geomagic Design X. My name is David Arita. I'm a Senior Specialist and Applications Engineer here on the 3D Scanning Team at Go Engineer. Today we're going to look at a function used primarily to create a hybrid model. And what I mean by hybrid model is sometimes we come across uh, castings, uh, things that are fairly organic, forgings, it could be a sculpture, something that really can't be modeled in the traditional CAD space. So we're going to look at a sub-method actually of auto surfacing inside of DesignX. Here we're going to use selective surfacing. And that's used if only a partial area of the scan needs to be surfaced. Depending on the options used, we can create a surface or solid body. Mesh regions or 3D mesh sketches can be used to determine the boundary area of the auto surfacing. This method can also be used as an alternative to the more traditional and kind of manual workflow of making a copy of the mesh, defeaturing some of the design intent features, and then coming back to model those features in here. This function actually creates a copy for us in the workflow, and then depending on the options, it will create a solid or surface body. Let's get started. So here we have a scan of a cast part. You can see it's fairly organic, yet it does have a couple of features that looks like they've been modeled with some uh, design intent. So we've got a feature here, here, and actually these flat areas up here could be considered features if we want to, when we get to the CAD level, to ensure that there were single uh, CAD face on either side. So the method that we're going to use is actually um, selective surfacing uh, using curves. So I'm going to go ahead and go to a 3D sketch, 3D mesh sketch, and say I'm going to use this uh, function here called trace feature line. So what that does is with a, when I select the seed area, it's going to establish kind of a spline along the curvature of that scan. So you can see right here, basically kind of, if we were to consider this a fillet, it's going to put it kind of right in the middle of that fillet. So I'm going to go ahead and accept that. I'm going to run that same command over here on this side. And click there and accept that. Now the placement of the spline currently is right on top of that fillet. So what's going to happen when we get to the CAD level, and we use this basically as a trimming boundary, uh, on the CAD, it's going to actually kind of dip in. That's because the spline kind of lies inside of this curve curvature a little bit. So we want to go ahead and offset this a little bit to the outside. So I'm going to go ahead and run this offset command. And I'm going to go ahead and just select the spline here and change the direction so it's going to the outside. That'll ensure kind of when this thing gets filled in or established as a boundary, it'll be in a, in a flat area here. And I'm going to remove the original curve. So that's that side. I'll repeat that for over here. Change the direction. Okay. And now I'm going to do the same thing on this side as well. So I'll go ahead and run that trace feature line command again. Pick right on that fillet. Accept it. And same thing for right here. Run the command. Accept it. And again, I'm going to have to offset this to the outside. So offset, change direction, two millimeters. And let's do that over here as well. And change direction. OK. That looks pretty good. So now I need to do the same thing for up here. I find it a little bit easier and kind of cleaner to use a different function. Instead of using the trace feature line, I'm going to say I want to create a section. And that's going to be based on a plane. So once I pick this plane, you can see currently it's going right through that virtual plane. It's kind of previewing what that spline might look like. So I'm going to offset this, just kind of eyeballing it. And just I want to get it close to the edge as possible and make sure I'm not grabbing too much of the this, um, this parting area down here on either side. So that looks pretty good. I'll accept that. And I'm going to repeat that command and place one of these on the bottom as well. So let's just drag this down. You don't have to flip this view here in a second. OK, see, it's grabbing a little bit too much on the left and right that I want. So I'm going to grab this arrow and just kind of keep sliding it up until I can kind of see right about there. OK, that looks good. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and accept that. And now we have some curves to work with when we get to the auto surfacing function. 
Next, we're going to come up here to the exact surfacing tab, and we're going to go ahead and run this auto surface command. I'm going to leave it mechanical uh, as far as the shape goes. It just runs a little bit different algorithm. I think either of these is going to work fine. I'm going to let the software uh, auto estimate the patch count for us. I'm going to leave this at adaptive, which will basically have different size shapes instead of trying to have uh, the patches be constant shape. I'll leave the accuracy where it is. This does a fairly good job with either of these uh, settings here. It's going to uh, produce a very accurate model. And here's where we're going to go into something where we're going to use the selective surfacing. That's the, the point of this video here. So with that, we have basically two options, uh, either by mesh selection, which basically uses regions. Uh, we haven't established any regions on this for running this command, but we did do boundary curves. So I'm going to go ahead and say use curves. And I'm going to say all curves. And then you can see here basically where it's been selected and where it's not selected. So these are going to be the boundaries of our CAD model. And what I'm going to do is also just to kind of remind you here, running this method basically is an alternative to us manually making a copy of the original, pasting it, then essentially defeaturing uh, these areas manually, then running the standard auto surfacing, then come back and model the features. So this is going to basically make a copy mesh for us while it's going to make a CAD uh, body as well. We have actually have the option of filling holes, which will make a solid body. In this case, I'm going to leave this unchecked. We're going to go ahead and create a surface body instead. And I'm going to say, I want to extend the boundaries four millimeters. What that's going to do is, right where this boundary is, it's going to be extended inward by four millimeters on each boundary. That's going to ensure that when we draw the future engineered-like features here that they're going to be intersecting. So I'll go ahead and say OK or go to the next step. OK, so at this point this is the mesh version. You can see it made a copy here and it's going to name it Auto Surface Mesh 1 and the auto surfacing is going to take place on this copied mesh. So I'll go to the next step. OK, so now the command is done. Go ahead and accept that. Okay, so now it's created a surface body for us. I'll go ahead and turn off the mesh. So you can see that this is a surface body. And if we want to make this a solid, we're gonna go ahead and create some features here to basically try to make sure that all the surfaces that we generate form an enclosed volume here. So I'm gonna go back to my original mesh. And I am gonna, at this point, create some regions to kind of expedite the, the process here. So I'll come over here to my Polygons tab. I'm going to select this top face here of the mesh. And I'm going to insert a region. If I check the region real quick, it says that's a plane. That's kind of what I'm looking for here. So I'll do the same thing on the other side. Select this planar mesh area here and insert a region here. And on this, what looks to be a cylinder, I'll go ahead and insert a region here as well. Okay, so that should be a cylinder. And this one has a little bit more information going on here. So I'm going to go ahead and select this a little bit differently. here. So let's go normal to this, this uh, front plane here. And I'll flip that 180. I'm going to use this selection tool here, the circular selection tool that will help me select this kind of in a circular fashion. So I'm just going to kind of eyeball center, drag this out, and go ahead and select right in there. So that looks pretty good. And on this side, I grabbed a little bit too much because of that circular diameter kind of grabbed a little bit more than needed. So I'm just going to unselect this by going over here to my polygons tab, changing my tool to a Polygon. I'm just going to go ahead and deselect this little area right here, like so. Just kind of window around that. And now I've deselected the outside. So at this point, I'm ready to insert a region. So go back to my regions tab, say insert a region. If I go ahead and check with my selection tool, so now it sees that entire region as a revolution. So now I'm ready to create a few more surfaces. We'll go ahead and go up to the Model tab, and I'm going to go to Surface Primitive. I'm going to tell the software I'm looking to extract 
a couple of planes here. So we'll do that one and then the one on the bottom. And then the last one here is going to be a cylinder. I'm going to extract this region. And this last one over here is not really a primitive shape, so I'm going to use a different tool for that. I'm going to use this revolution wizard. And the target is this revolution region. I'm going to force the axis to be normal to the front plane. And then I'm also going to tell it I'm looking to insert a surface rather than a solid. So I'll go to the next step. And we can see here it gives us a preview of what it's going to do. So it's creating a vector, it's creating a plane, it's creating a sketch for me. And sometimes you can play around with this uh, resolution slider bar. It's kind of trial and error a little bit, but if you need to edit it after the fact, which is common in this case, it's falling short here on the profile on either side. So I'm going to go back to the sketch anyway, just to make it longer. And But other than that, it looks pretty good. So I'll say OK to that. And then I'll go back into the sketch to edit the profile. So here what I'm looking to do, as mentioned before, I'm just going to extend this or resize this piece here. And also I'll just resize it here. The other thing I'm looking at is ah, it's missing one tangency point here. So I'll just go ahead and actually just click in here. This is a threshold. So if it's within 10 degrees, it'll make it tangent. So that's all I need to do for that. I'll go ahead and exit the sketch. And now I can go ahead and turn on my surfaces. And just to kind of verify here, just to ensure, I'm looking for a complete intersection about all these surfaces here. In doing so, when we run this command uh, called solidify, if everything is intersecting, that means that there's an enclosed volume that's watertight. So that allows us to create a solid. So I'm going to find that command under here. Menu, Insert, Surface, Solidify. I'll say All Surface Bodies, and OK. OK, so that's the result of using the Solidify command with those surfaces. So now I have a complete solid body with the engineered design intent features modeled in here. They are in the history tree with sketches and revolve features. And I've got a couple of flat CAD faces here. So in recap, what we did, we used the auto surfacing selective surfacing method where we use curves to define basically trimming boundaries. In this case, we auto surfaced a surface body, went back and created additional surfaces, making an enclosed volume that when we use the solidify command, it made a solid model. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you learned something. See you next time.